in the heart of 16th century Hungary, nestled within the dark and foreboding walls of Chaktis Castle, lived a woman who would go down in history as one of the most notorious figures of her time, Elizabeth Bathory. Born into one of the most powerful families in the region, the Bathory's young Elizabeth was raised with privilege and expectations. Her noble lineage gave her access to education, culture and power, but it also imposed upon her the burden of upholding the family's name and reputation. Elizabeth's life began like a fairy tale, but it would soon take a dark and twisted turn that would shock the world. The Bathory family had a long and storied history, but Elizabeth's notoriety would eclipse all that came before her. She was a striking figure renowned for her beauty and intelligence. However, it was this beauty that would eventually become her obsession. As the years passed, she grew increasingly anxious about her fading youth and looks. This obsession with maintaining her youthful appearance would drive her to commit heinous acts that would go down in history as some of the most gruesome and horrifying crimes ever committed by a woman of her status. Elizabeth Bathory's rise to infamy was further fueled by her marriage to Count Ferenc Nardazdi, a fearsome, brutal warrior known for his military victories against the Ottoman Empire. The union with Nardazdi, while politically advantageous, also brought her face to face with the brutal realities of war. Her husband's violent tactics in battle deeply affected her, and some believe that it was during this time that her dark desires and obsessions began to take root. Elizabeth Bathory's obsession with her own beauty and the pursuit of immortality was relentless. She believed that the secret to eternal youth lay in the blood of young virgins, a belief likely influenced by superstitions and folk legends of her time. In her mind, the crimson life force coursing through the veins of these young girls held the key to reversing the effects of aging. She surrounded herself with a network of trusted servants, who shared her delusions and aided her in her gruesome quest. Inside the confines of Chatty's castle, the rituals she devised were as grotesque as they were absurd. Young girls, often local peasants, were lured to the castle under the false promise of employment or education. Once within her grasp, they would be subjected to unimaginable horrors. Bathory and her servants would mercilessly drain their blood, often through vicious beatings, sharp objects and other sadistic means. The Countess herself would indulge in gruesome bloodbaths, believing that bathing in the vital fluid of virgins would rejuvenate her skin, making her appear ageless. The bloodbaths weren't solely about maintaining her beauty, but also an expression of her sadistic pleasure. Bathory seemed to derive a sick satisfaction from the gruesome acts, leading some to speculate about the depths of her depravity and the possibility of underlying mental illness that fueled her obsession with blood and youth. Within the cold stone chambers of Chatty's castle, Elizabeth Bathory conducted her sinister rituals with a chilling sense of routine. The unfortunate victims who fell into her clutches experienced a nightmarish existence. They were isolated, imprisoned, and subjected to unspeakable horrors. Bathory's loyal servants, who themselves had been drawn into her macabre world, played crucial roles in perpetuating her reign of terror. The castle's dungeons became a place of unimaginable suffering, where the anguished cries of the young girls would echo through the walls unheard by the outside world. Bathory's insatiable appetite for blood knew no bounds, and she continued her atrocities for years, with the numbers of her victims reaching into the hundreds. The horrors that transpired within the castle were shrouded in secrecy, but as time passed, the whispers of these unspeakable acts could no longer be contained, and they began to reach the ears of those beyond the castle walls. The horrifying events at Chachi's castle could not remain hidden forever. The local villagers and peasants could no longer ignore the rumors and tales of young girls who vanished without a trace, never to be seen again. The stench of death seemed to linger around the castle, and a sense of foreboding shrouded the area. Fear and unease spread like wildfire through the region as the legend of the bloodthirsty Countess Bathory took root. Concerned family members of the missing girls, spurred on by the eerie stories circulating through the countryside, began to investigate the truth behind the tales. They sought the counsel of the clergy who too heard the whispers of horror. As they delved deeper into the unsettling accounts, they uncovered a web of depravity and cruelty 
that could no longer be ignored. The moment of reckoning arrived when a Lutheran minister named Istvan Magiri dared to confront Elizabeth Bathory about the disturbing rumours that had plagued her. What he encountered inside the castle was a scene of such horrific brutality that it shook him to the core. The evidence was too overwhelming to ignore, and he immediately reported his findings to the authorities. The Countess's days of infamy were numbered. In 1610, the mounting evidence of Elizabeth Bathory's heinous crimes could no longer be ignored. Her reign of terror was coming to an end. The authorities, horrified by the scope of her crimes, decided to take action. Bathory and her loyal servants were arrested and brought to trial. The testimonies of survivors and witnesses painted a horrifying picture of life within the castle's walls, and the evidence of their guilt was overwhelming. The trial of the Blood Countess was a sensational event. It was a stark reminder of the horrors one person could commit when driven by unchecked desires and delusions of eternal youth. The verdict was swift and merciless. Elizabeth Bathory and her accomplices were found guilty of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to a lifetime of imprisonment. The Countess was confined to a small room within her own castle, with only a small slot through which she received food and water, sealed off from the world. Despite the mountain of evidence against her, some in Hungary's aristocracy continued to protect her reputation by preventing her execution, which was a rare occurrence for someone of her status. This leniency, however, did not prevent the Countess from being forever remembered as one of history's most prolific and sadistic murderers. Elizabeth Bathory's name has become synonymous with horror and serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of unchecked desires. Her story has inspired numerous works of literature, music and film, each adding its own interpretation to the Makiba narrative. Whether a historical figure or a product of myth and exaggeration, Bathory's legacy endures as a grim reminder of the depth to which a human soul can descend when consumed by obsession and cruelty. The enduring fascination with Elizabeth's dark legacy has given rise to a plethora of urban legends and ghost stories surrounding her supposed haunting. Chautis Castle, where she lived and allegedly committed her heinous acts, has become a subject of paranormal intrigue. Tales of spectral apparitions, blood-curdling screams echoing through the corridors, and the chilling sight of a blood-drenched county Wandering the halls have only added to the mystique surrounding her story. This blending of reality and the supernatural further solidifies Bathory's place in the realm of horror folklore, ensuring that her name will continue to send shivers down the spines of those who dare to delve into the horrid and the mysterious. Elizabeth Bathory, whether a historical figure or a creature of myth, has become an immortal icon of terror, leaving an indelible mark on the collective imagination of those who seek the thrill of the grotesque.